generally when I'm on vacation, I'm not in a hurry to get home, but I got a call from my dad. He said there was a box on my doorstep from the UK, and uh, ever since he said that, I've been looking forward to being home here in the shop because it has some tools inside that I'm extremely excited about. Check it out. All right, we've got a special little uh, unboxing today every once in a while. I got my dad here with me today. He enjoy, he loves being on camera. So he wanted to see this box open. So I said, well, we're gonna shoot a video. So we'll do that. Um, I, got, uh, I got a box here in the mail and every time you get something that says Royal Mail, you know it's good stuff. Uh, so this came from the UK, Ben Crow at Crimson Guitars. For those of you who don't know uh, who Ben Crow is, He's a custom guitar builder, builds some phenomenal guitars, has a bunch of videos on YouTube showing him doing the process, and one of them he made a guitar in 24 hours. It was really cool. But uh, his videos have helped me a ton on my guitar project. I'm building my first guitar, and rather than going with plans like a lot of people do, or a kick guitar, I just bought a few chunks of wood and started carving at them, and uh, I'm getting really close. Uh, on this little beauty down here for those of you who aren't followers of my channel. Uh, so we're getting ready to fret this thing and I've been waiting for some tools to arrive from Ben. So uh, that's, that, that's kind of Ben's, Ben's angle on guitar building. It's really tough to make a living from what I understand and if you do the math you'll understand why. It's uh, tough to make a living building guitars unless you do thousands of them in a factory. Uh, if you're just doing them one at a time, I mean, even if you sell guitars for, you know, $10,000 a piece, you add it up, how many of those do you have to build a month to make a business go? And uh, it's, it's not easy to do. So he started making tools, and he makes probably, from what I've seen, some of the finest luthier tools out there. And these guys here sent me a catalog. It came in the mail the same day, so I just kind of thought that was funny. But they have a lot of the same tools on the front of their deal. But you'll see uh, when I open these, I think this is the first half of my order from Ben. So I expect to see a couple files in here. Uh, he hand makes some of the files. They hand cut the files, uh, hand machine them. And I know one of his machinists got his finger caught in a router and got injured. So production slowed down considerably on these tools. And uh, Ben was nice enough. In November, he really wanted to piss off his tool builders. So he, <laughs> he put out a 20% off coupon to get people to order more tools. And I was one of those people. And uh, so their production, you know, they, they needed to produce more tools and then they had a guy get injured. So Ben sent me a nice email and said, uh, you know, once the guy gets back in the shop building tools, I'll have the second half of my order put together. But this is way too much babbling here, so we'll get to the unboxing. One of the things I did hear from Ben, geez Louise, uh, was that, that they package their tools uh, uniquely. And it's kind of interesting as a designer, as a creative guy, I really appreciate the packaging and the thought that goes into it. And what it really tells you is that what's inside of that package was, I suppose, special enough for somebody to go through the trouble of putting it together that way. So we'll see if these are packaged in the same way. Looks like it got past customs there, so that's always good. We're not shipping anything illegal, no big surprises, no live animals. But uh, here's your knife back, Dad. Here, hand it to you. Handle first. Uh -oh. Box within a box, maybe? Hmm. There we go. So, uh, yeah, there we go. And you can kind of see the first indication that these are well taken care of. A uh, little bubble wrap there. And this is a little plug for Ben's website and the Luthiers Guild, which unfortunately I'm not a member. Um, and it's simply because I, I have too many other commitments. I feel like uh, I feel like I should be, but I'm not. But we'll take a look here. These appear to be my two, two or three of the files I ordered uh, wrapped in some brown craft paper with some red twine. I spent some time studying in France and the French folks are very, 
into the packaging and, and this really reminds me of that uh, that type of experience so <laughs> you can just see how cool this is uh, to unwrap so here we go I think I've got three files in here and maybe I don't maybe I do uh, so we've got some fret polishing I'm gonna call them erasers but uh, they're kinda like a stone rubber and they're an abrasive check mm -hmm. those out Dan they're, they're two different abrasives, and you just rub them on the frets, and they polish them up. I've seen Ben use those. Uh, this here, I believe, wonder if I could, wonder if I could clean the model railroad track with that. I'll bet you could. We could probably yeah. order some for, for you from Ben. Uh, so here's a, a file, and, and this is not one of his handmade files, but what they do is they come in and custom grind and polish the edges, so when you're when you're uh, done leveling your frets, you can come in and put a bevel on your frets with this without worrying about ruining your fretboard. A uh, nice custom wood handle there, and they use the cutoffs from the guitars they make to do these wood handles. So this looks like a nice piece of mahogany, if I'm correct. It may or may not be, but I think that's what it is. So we'll set this guy here. This appears to be the fret leveling file. So I think this is like a seven inch, what would that be in millimeters? Ooh, I don't know. 175 maybe? You do the math. Somewhere in that range. Uh, fret leveling file. And this is one of his revised designs, which I, I heard about the other day. That, uh, and, and this is, this is high tech as far as leveling goes. So this has to be just dead flat. And we're talking, you know, thousandths of an inch flat. You, you don't want any gaps in here. And I don't know if you guys can see that just a little straight edge there. And uh, this straight edge isn't the straightest thing. Let me get a better straight edge. There we go. We'll get a little stainless straight edge here. And I'm over a white, a white piece of laminate and uh, the only time you can see the white is when you line up when you line up with the grooves there so that's that's pretty darn flat but the really cool thing is this is a very high-tech fret leveling file so essentially you you get your frets on and you use this guy and uh, level them up it's got nice polished edges so you don't have to worry about screwing things up but it actually has a truss rod in there. So this is an adjustment. So if it does develop a little bow, because as we all know, wood dries out over time and tends to bow and, and move, uh, this truss rod will allow you to actually adjust that bow. Pretty impressive, isn't it? It is. Uh, I can't believe he sells these uh, for the price he sells them for with as much work uh, that has to go into them. This looks like a little bit of a bird's eyed um, I'm going to guess it's a maple just because I don't know any other wood that, that gets the bird's eyes, but uh, that's a really nice piece of wood. Just kind of feel that, Dad. It's wow. a pretty nice tool, isn't it? Yes, it is. Uh, Fits the hand. Yes, it does. Very much so. Wow. Just uh, extremely well made. There's no sharp edges on there. It's got a, wow. I don't know if that's a wax finish or, or what kind of finish that is, but uh, mm -hmm. maybe just an oil finish. It's very nice. And I'll be perfectly honest, I have no idea what's in this one. I can't remember. Ah, uh, yes, scrapers. Um, this is something you can buy here in the States. Uh, it's just really a piece of sheet metal, right, that's been finely honed or machined so that you get very straight edges and you use these to, uh, to scrape the finished surfaces of pieces of wood. This has got some oil on it. I need to take care of. I don't want to get that anywhere near the finish of the guitar there. In fact, I'm just going to set it off <clears throat> here. And then this is, uh, I, I don't even know what you call this shape, the amoeba. <laughs> the amoeba shape scraper so you can do radius uh, portions of the guitar and that sort of thing. So uh, these came at just the perfect time. I actually finished this guitar and had it painted or stained or, sorry, dyed. I had it dyed and uh, I got done with it. I let it sit for a few days and looked at it and I just absolutely hated it. So I stripped it all back down and uh, I've actually got some differential in the two pieces of the top here. So I need to scrape them down or sand them down. And actually the, the scraping produces a lot less dust 
uh, and particles than the sanding does. So I am going to use the new cabinet scraper on this after I get them properly cleaned up. So Ben and the crew there at Crimson Guitars, I think Thomas or Tom actually sent me an email letting me know the status at one point in time. So thank you so much for the tools. Uh, for getting them out and I apologize to the tool makers for uh, adding to your headache over the uh, holidays there and making it difficult but uh, it's all good I'm glad you guys spent the time and effort to make these tools uh, they are going to go to very very good use this is my first guitar out of a out of a series of three that I'm going to be building and uh, after that we'll just see what happens but they'll definitely go to good use here in the shop I do more metal work projects than I do wood, and I guarantee those files will come in very, very handy for the metal work as well. So that's it. Dad, got anything to say? Where am I at? You're right there. Don't let your meat loaf. <laughs> Thanks, Dad.